Welcome to episode 111 of the Family Answer Man podcast. Today we're talking about quietly confronting narcissism in the family from a biblical worldview on the Family Answer Man. I'm David Orgis. I'm your host and I am joined by Dr. Mark Crosby. He's a pastor, educator, mental health professional, and he is the resident expert here on the Family Answer Man podcast. Um, Family Answer Man is not a therapy session. We can't give specific advice to your unique circumstances, but we do believe that mental and spiritual health are very serious uh, issues. So for in-depth answers to your questions, we want to encourage you to seek professional counsel for those questions. Uh, before we jump in today, uh, go ahead and help us out. Hit the notification bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss an episode of The Family Ants Man. And um, if the show has been uh, helpful to you at all, I want to ask you just if you would rate and review us on your favorite podcast app. Uh, that is really helpful, gets us up to the top of the feed, helps more people find the show. And as always, you can invite your family and friends uh, to join you on this journey of building stronger, healthier, happier families. Well, Dr. Mark, it yes. is good to be here with you today. Absolutely. And uh, I think we have an intriguing episode um, yes. just by the title of Quietly Confronting Narcissists in the Family. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be, I think, uh, an interesting answer to the question that we have. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, narcissists from just a, a an overview of what is a narcissist. Yeah, again, this is a term that we all use, unfortunately. Uh, it's the more popular term when you want to say something unkind about someone. <laughs> Just uh, a generic, all-around bad guy, right? Right, right. But there is, basically, what we're talking about here is the narcissistic personality disorder. Mm. Now, I will say this. Uh, I think most of my colleagues would agree that narcissism is something we all have a little bit of. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like cholesterol. Okay. okay. <laughs> we all have some cholesterol. It's when your cholesterol levels get beyond the normal range mm -hmm. that you begin to have problems. For example, in narcissism, we all want to look nice. We all want to do well. We all want to have nice things for the most part. Uh, most of us want to achieve and accomplish. Uh, most of us want our accomplishments or our achievements to be recognized. Even. Right. And that, those aren't bad things. It's when it becomes beyond the normal range. Mm -hmm. It's when it's when it becomes where we are wanting to control everyone, when we're wanting to flash our diamond rings, you know, in front of people, when we want to let everybody know how amazing we are, how wonderful we are, what we have done, how great my kids are, why my kids got into the finest universities, and maybe why your kids didn't. That's a type of narcissism that most people detest. And most people, when they think of narcissists, they, they think in those terms. And so and sometimes, in some cases, uh, narcissism, again, is this grandiose uh, feeling of importance. It's feeling I'm special. It's wanting and desiring excessive admiration. It's taking advantage of other people. It's unwilling to recognize the need of others. And it's trying to, I think, in the most worst part of of the relationship is just trying to control other people. Mm, yeah. I'm more important than you are. I'm in control of who you are. I'll tell you what to do, how to mm. do, especially when the person doesn't have the authority per se to do that. And so it's basically, you know, being in control or being overly controlling uh, when it's not necessary. Mm. And so again, not that it's ever necessary, but but again, you're not in an authoritative position. The, these right, people this aren't, isn't a boss, and employee. Right, where these you aren't have your subordinates. Yeah. And so anyway, uh, but you think they are mm. because of who you think you are. And so you, are, again, are unkind to those around you. You're unkind to those you feel uh, are inferior to you from your perspective. And so this sense of narcissism, this sense of pride, this sense of control uh, begins to interfere with relationships that normally could be healthy, strong, meaningful, et cetera. Well, we're going to see how that applies and how uh, when uncontrolled and out of check, some of the natural tendencies that we have, right. uh, how that affects a family. The question that uh, came in today is a good question. And if you'd like to have your question answered, you can do that. Uh, you can email us familyanswerman at liveoak.church. Uh, that's familyanswerman at liveoak.church. Uh, we'd love to answer your question for you. And our question today says, I'm a medical professional, a father of two girls, and happily married. However, my parents still demand that I cut their grass, spend all day with them on Sundays, and run their errands, even though I live an hour away. Mm. When I tell them that I can't or I give them my boundaries, they tell me what a bad son I am, and they threaten to take me out of their will, or even worse, they blame my wife. What can I do? So again, unfortunately, this sounds like a case of, again, family 
parental narcissism. Mm. And what that simply means is, is that even though this person is married, they have a family, they sound like they're well-educated, sound like they have a, a career that they are involved in and enjoy, uh, for some reason the parents aren't letting go. Mm. And for some reason the parents have this, again, this grandiose sense of self-importance. We're the mom, we're the dad. Even though you live an hour away, we still expect you <clears throat> to adhere and to abide by our wishes, by our demands. And so what happens is, is that that is a source of narcissism where the person, uh, in this case the parent, feels as if their life, their lifestyle, their needs are far more important than their sons and his family. Mm. Yeah, so we've, we've talked about narcissism from the child's perspective of, mm -hmm. of having children that are narcissistic, but this can happen with, from parents as well. Exactly. So the, so the parents feel like, again, their needs, their desires, their situation, again, should usurp that of mm. their son and his family. And so therefore, again, another uh, aspect of, of narcissism is they feel like they're special. I'm the mom, I'm the dad, we raised you, we gave to you, we funded your college education, therefore you owe us, mm -hmm. <clears throat> therefore we're special, therefore you need to march to our drumbeat, so to speak. And so this sense of being self-important, grandiose, being special, uh, maybe in some cases uh, they feel like that the loyalty should be towards them. Uh, that a lot of parents feel like even though my son or daughter is married, <clears throat> the loyalty still should be towards us. We should decide where we go on vacation. We should decide where the holidays are spent. We should decide who you vote for. We should decide, you know, what is best for your children because we're the parents or the grandparents, and therefore the loyalty should be to us. The admiration should be towards us. Not only that, but they take advantage of this. <clears throat> you know, sometimes parents, again, who have narcissistic tendencies, I'll just put it that way, sometimes take advantage of their son or daughter, especially if their son or daughter uh, wants to still please them, wants to still be a good son, wants to still be a good daughter. I want to help my parents. They'll take advantage right. of that. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, hey, look, come by when you can, come by whenever it's convenient for you, hey, come by, you know, next time you're in the neighborhood, they are demanding. You're to come every Sunday. You're to come every Saturday. You're to come every night. You're to call me every afternoon at 6 o'clock. As if this son or daughter, who's now married with children, is 7 years old mm -hmm. or 17 years old even. Right. And so they take advantage of, again, the, the good nature of their son or daughter. Hmm. And then last of all, they're unwilling to recognize the need of others. That's the part of the problem of a narcissist. They, they are not willing to recognize the other person's need. They don't step back. In this case, these parents don't step back and say, well, my son, he's a medical professional. He's got a family. He's got a couple of children. Uh, he lives an hour away. We need to be respectful of that. We need to be mindful of that. We need to be even you know, grateful for that, mm -hmm. that he's doing so well. He has his own family now. But instead, they don't recognize his needs. They don't recognize his desires. They don't recognize, you know, the demands on his life. All they know is, hey, my grass has to be cut. Mm. You need to run errands for me. You need to see your mom and dad. Mm. That's how it is. I don't care, you know, whose life you're saving, you know, at the yeah. hospital. <laughs> you know, I don't care how much your daughters need you or how much your wife needs you. It's still about us. Yeah. And for Christians, I know a lot of times you'll, they'll, <clears throat> parents that are in this position, adult parents will use uh, the They'll use the scripture that you're supposed to honor your mother exactly. and father and that, that this yeah. is, you know, it's kind of a leverage point yeah. trying to, like you said, breach some of those boundaries. And then don't forget the part about leaving and cleaving, yeah. okay? <laughs> where, where you leave yeah. your father, your mother, and cleave your wife. So if you're just tuning in to our, our program and to our, our question, we have, a, again, a son who is a medical professional, uh, but his parents are very narcissistic in their demands and their mm -hmm. control over him. And he's wondering no, wondering what, what to do. Yeah. So here's the question. So what can be done? Well, in some cases, verbal boundaries are given. You know, we'll say, hey, mom, hey, dad, look, you know, I'm busy. You know, I got a lot going on. Uh, I can't come every Sunday. Uh, I'll do my best. These verbal boundaries, unfortunately, for many narcissists, whether it be your parents or anybody, mm. often don't work. Okay, so verbal verbal, verbal boundaries, boundaries don't really. By, by saying, for example, look, uh, hey, you know, I, I can't do this right now. I'm really in the middle of a very important uh, part of my business. So there's a turnaround at our plant or whatever. And so what happens is, is that these verbal boundaries really do not register with the narcissist. Mm. 
Okay. All the narcissist knows is this is what I need. I'm in control. You should acquiesce to what I have to say. You should, you know, submit to who I am because I am your mom. I am your dad. I'm in charge. I raised you. And so these verbal boundaries for a lot of narcissists just don't work. And so what happens is the narcissistic parent, or in some cases, the narcissistic person in general, they'll push back. They'll demand a reason. What do you mean you can't come see me on Sunday? What's wrong? What are you doing on Sunday? What's so, what is so busy for you on Sunday that you can't come see me? Mm-hmm. What's the problem? I'm your mom. I'm your dad. We have grass to cut. We've got things to do. You know, I got some errands to run. You know, you need to pick up my prescription or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is they demand a reason. And for a lot of adult children, they get caught up in that web. Yeah. And they start saying, well, let me tell you why, or let me tell you what I should do, or let me see what I can work out. Mm-hmm. Let me see what I can try to do, to, uh, do differently. And so, again, the parent, again, begins to almost berate the adult child, even though they're a professional, even though they have their own family, they begin to berate their child because they want their way. They want to be in control, and how dare you not serve me? Like you said, exploiting their good nature of their children. And so, again, as every narcissist does just about, they will use the guilt Mm. and the shame and the extortion. Mm-hmm. which is basically part of this question because the person who wrote in this question says, my parents are now even saying if I don't do what they ask me to do, they may write me out of their will. Right. Going to take you out of the will. And so, gonna... yeah, that's... That's pretty intense. It is intense. And, and that's, that's that's out of line for anyone to, to give threats to coerce. We talked about that a couple episodes back, right? right? About coercion. Coercive from control. From that we love. Yeah. Yeah, coercive control. And what that does is that damages most relationships because no relationship wants to be based upon right. if you don't do this, I will punish you. Yeah. So anyway, so what happens is, is that they, again, uh, the, the narcissistic parent in this case, they turn the verbal boundaries into a game. So when you say stop it, or when you say, hey, let's talk, that doesn't work for them. When you begin to use verbal boundaries about, again, what you're going to do or not do verbally, that just basically creates a game for them. It's almost like, I'll show you. I will out-talk you. I will talk you down so hard, so fast, Mm. you will eventually give in to what I want. Mm. I will talk you down to where your boundaries no longer are in force. Mm. And so so the the reality is that uh, most narcissists, and here's the point, do not respect verbal boundaries. Okay. And so that, that's part of the problem. So again, and the reason for that, again, as we said a while ago, is it feeds into their pathology. Because narcissism sees controlling someone like a game. Mm-hmm. You know, who can, I con- who can I control? Who do I, who can I intimidate? Who can I get to do my bidding? Who can I get to do what I want? Who can I get to do what I desire? And it's almost like a game to them. Mm-hmm. And so when you start pushing back, when you start using verbal boundaries, that feeds into their pathology. Mm-hmm. And we see this with, with, with couples, you know, uh, men and women who are dating. When, when a woman says, for example, please stop, or when a woman says to a narcissist, but, but I can't, that doesn't work. Because what they're doing now, they hear the word "please stop" or 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 a person saying "I can't." When a narcissist hears that, that again basically heightens their pathology, and now the game is on. Mm. And now you're just fueling, you know, their pathology. You're fueling, you know, who they are. You're fueling their uh, disorder, if you will, by pushing back and using verbal boundaries. So. The million dollar question is, what do you do? Right. If verbal boundaries don't work. (laughs) So if verbal boundaries don't work, then you have to, quote unquote, live out your boundaries. Okay. That's why we're calling this, you know, the quiet boundary, if you will. Uh, So you live out your boundaries. What does that mean? It means this. It means, first of all, you don't say much. You say very little. You don't let the verbal boundary be your go-to. Because again, all that's doing is fueling the pathology of the narcissist. They see this now as game on. But if you distance yourself, if you block that number, if you don't take the phone call the first time, if you let it go to voicemail, if you decide to call them back when it's convenient for you, Mm -hmm. then what you're doing now is that you're creating this quiet boundary whereby they're now having to stew over their demands, but they have no one to demand. 
so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, they're trying to control someone who is not there. You're not participating. You're not participating. Yeah. You're, you're, not, you're not playing their game. Hmm. And because the narcissist loves to play the game of I'm in control, I get to dominate, you need to feel intimidated, you need to feel less than, you need to feel inferior to me because this is the game that I, the narcissist, am going to play. And so, and so you see this in the corporate world. You see this in churches. Mm. Uh, you see this in families. You see this where, again, there's the patriarch of the matriarch wanting everybody to know you're going to play by my rules. You know, I mean, we've all made uh, fun of maybe that grandpa or that grandma. You know, she's the godmother. She's the godfather, you know, kind of thing. You know, this is the mafia. You know, you married into the the mafia of, you know, <laughs> fill in the blank of the name of your town. Right, you know? right. And so, uh, and so that's what it feels like. It feels like, you know, that mm-hmm. the mafia is telling you what to do, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Because that's what that's how this sort of coercive control, this sort of uh, narcissistic behavior is how it, again, uh, basically begins to uh, spell out. So I know you said the key is is quiet boundaries, right? right. Um, do you need to establish your boundaries once verbally and then enforce them? Or I mean, is it you, effective you, just to enforce you them? You can, but when you realize that it's not working, then you have to just basically go quiet. Okay. And just let your actions, as the old saying goes, speak louder than actions your words. Speak louder than words. And so you begin to live out your boundaries by saying little. You distance yourself. Uh, and you realize that these unspoken boundaries now create a higher wall than your verbal boundaries. Mm. And so what begins to happen is, is that uh, in this case, that that dad keeps calling his son who lives an hour away to come cut his grass. Well, maybe now the son is not catching the phone call. Or maybe he's calling back and saying, hey, I'm sorry, not happening. Um, you need to find someone, someone else this weekend or whatever. And, and, then, and then let it go. You don't give explanation. You don't say, I'm so sorry. You don't say, well, you know, it's the kid's birthday party. You don't say, I'm on call. You just simply say, I can't do it. I'm sorry. You're going to have to find someone else this time and let it go. Right. And now it's on them. Mm. And now it's on them. So you distance yourself uh, and put distance, if you will, if you will, between yourself and the narcissist. Mm. And so the rule is this. Don't be around those who abuse you or disrespect you. That, that's that's mm-hmm. the basic rule. Yeah, don't be around those that Don't abuse be around or those you. who are going to abuse you or disrespect mm-hmm. you. Uh, whether that's, you know, the, the the neighbor down the street, you know, the colleague at work, you know, the, the parent or the grandparent who doesn't respect, you know, what's important to you. So you just don't put yourself around those who are going to abuse you or disrespect you. Mm-hmm. Now, you're going to say, but I love them or I care for them. Well, you can love them and care for them. But you don't have to put yourself in their company if they are going to choose to abuse you and disrespect you. Yeah, and I think a lot of people probably, they do. They push back and not out of, uh, because they disagree with what you're saying intellectually. But mm-hmm. I think there's an emotional mm-hmm. tie there, especially for, but this is my my mom, my dad, right. my parents. Right. And I do love them and yeah. I want to have a good sure. relationship with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. But you still have to create but boundaries. But you, you still have to create boundaries because if not, they're going to abuse you. Mm. Okay, and they're going to, again, say things and do things that's going to cause you problems with your nuclear family. Right. Now, with your wife and your children, because your girls, in this case, will be saying, where's dad? Right. Or the wife will be saying, I thought we were going to go to church this morning. Mm-hmm. I thought we were going to have Sunday dinner together. I thought we were going to go see my parents this weekend or whatever. Right. And now what's happening, you're causing dissonance between you and those that you should be involved with right your new primary responsibility is is your wife and children you leave and cleave you know so Mm -hmm. so this is your responsibility and so again this is what causes the the great divide in families Mm -hmm. uh when you don't when you don't do things that again creates boundaries or when you don't allow yourself to have these boundaries and if you don't you know keep yourself from being abused from those again even your own parents so again, so you don't be around those who abuse you. You mm-hmm. don't do things that create abuse in your life, and you don't and you don't go to places where you're more likely to be abused. So again, um, narcissists are drawn to people, by the way, who have minimal boundaries. Mm-hmm. So we need to keep that in mind. So if you're listening for the first time, or you're just tuning in. We're talking about narcissism in families, and narcissists are drawn to people who have minimal boundaries. Yeah. The reason why they're drawn to them is because they know they can control them. They know they can manipulate them. They know they can be superior or at least feel superior to them. Uh, And by the way, they're energized. Narcissists are energized 
by intimidating others, mm. by agitating others, and by controlling others. That fuels their purpose and meaning in life. Which is why you can't argue your way out of it. You can't no. uh, rationalize your no. way out of it. You can't reason with no. that person. No. The only thing that really works is distance. Distance, doing your own thing, uh, not putting yourself mm. within their web, if you will, not allowing them to have control. And look, we've all seen this. We've all been on vacations maybe with that person who they are going to tell you exactly what we're going to do. Mm. We're going to go to this restaurant. We're going to be there for 6 o'clock. You're going to order this. You're not going to order that. <laughs> we're going to leave the restaurant at a certain time. This is the movie we're going to go see. Right. We'll get up tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Everybody, you know, be at the table for 7.30. This is what will be for breakfast. And you're going, wait a minute. This is my vacation. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not your vacation if you put yourself in the middle of the rule of a narcissist. Yeah. And so... So again, again, and the thing is, they are energized by this type of control. The narcissist mm -hmm. is. They're energized by intimidating. They're energized by agitating. And they're energized by controlling. So the best thing that you can do when dealing with a narcissistic family member, first of all, is live a life that honors your values, your beliefs, your morals. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in this particular case, this young man, um, he loves his family, namely his wife and children. He, he enjoys what he does. That's what he values. Those, that's what he believes in. Uh, this is what he's wanting in life. So you have to live a life that honors those things. Mm -hmm. um, again, you're leaving and you're cleaving yeah. in this case. And you're right. leaving your father and your mother and you're cleaving to your wife. Uh, sometimes that means, again, as we said before, creating distance from the people who go against your principles. So there's someone who does not go along with your principles, who do not believe in your values, who do not believe in your morals. Then you have to distance yourself from them. Otherwise, they're going to pull you down. They're going to take you down. They're going to make you feel as if something's wrong with you. And before you know it, you've lost who you are. And for those that may be pushing back during this episode and you're hearing some of this and you're, you're feeling like, no, it shouldn't be that way. Any parent would give that advice to their teenager. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. If your teenager is hanging around with the wrong crowd right. and they're getting into trouble and they're they're causing your teenagers to compromise who they are, their values, morals, their identity, mm -hmm. you encourage them and, and right. even sometimes force them to distance themselves from those people. Exactly. Now hear this, you know, when you're dealing with a narcissist and you create this boundary, know this is that even the quiet boundary will be challenged. Mm. And the controller, the narcissist, will be infuriated because you are not responding to their phone call. You're not responding to their email immediately. You're not responding to their text message right away. And so what happens is you have to deep, deepen your commitment to what's important to you. Mm. You have to deepen your commitment to your wife in this case, to, to your children in this case, to your career in this case. Um, so again, so here's some tools that, that every person needs to guard against the narcissist in their life, the narcissist in their family, who wants to challenge them, control them, intimidate them, aggravate them, and, and cause them to feel as if they have no real control over themselves. Get ready to take some notes. So what are some, what are some tools that are needed? Number one, you have to focus. Focus on the things who are for you and not controlling you. In other words, you focus on the people in your life that need you. You focus on the people that are not there to control you. You focus on the people that, that you have responsibility with and over. Again, your wife, your children, your career, your colleagues, your coworkers. You have to focus on them and not the people who are the narcissists in your life because they will want you to control, excuse me, they'll want you to focus on them. Mm. That is the part of their control. You focus on me. So in this case, uh, this son is being made to feel I have to focus on my mom and dad who live an hour away right. who need me to come over and cut grass and not focus on my wife and my children. Mm -hmm. And again, that defies, we've been saying throughout this program, the leave and cleave principle. Yeah. Uh, number two, you need to have confidence that this is the best for you and those who count on you and for those who are not abusing you. You have to have confidence that this is best. This is best for you. You have to believe that this is, again, important for your family. You have to believe that those who are counting on you and not abusing you, that this is the best thing to do, to keep this boundary, this quiet boundary between you and those who are narcissistically trying to control you. Yeah. Uh, next, persevere. Uh, perseverance is so important. Uh, this is not an easy step, uh, yeah. but this is the way you stop the abuse. Yeah. This is the way you begin the first day of saying no more 
abuse, no more breaking down the boundaries, no more feeling controlled, no more feeling gaslit, however how you want to put it. You have to say, this is how I begin, and you persevere. And I, I like what you said a second ago, focus on the things that are for you, right? That's how you persevere, right. focusing on the things that are important to your values right. that are going to get you through it. One of the things we say all the time on this program is one of the most important things that any of us can do is focus on the things we have control over and mm-hmm. not the things we don't have control over. Yeah. And, and sometimes we get that, you know, just the opposite. But again, it's so very important. You cannot control the narcissist, but you can control how you respond to them. That's right. Okay. Uh, next is authenticity. Uh, in other words, knowing who you are. You know, this person in this particular question, they're a medical professional, uh, they're a father, they're a husband, and, and they know who they are. They're no longer, if you will, the subservient son to these parents. Right their role, their identity has now changed. Mm -hmm. They're a husband now. They're a father now. They're a medical professional now. Do we help our parents? Absolutely. Do we go by and visit? Sure. Do we we help where we can? We care for them. We love them. Yes. Absolutely. But we're not their, again, their their servant in the Mm -hmm. sense of every Sunday we have to cut their grass. Every Saturday we have to run their errands. Every Friday we have to pick up their groceries. Every Thursday we have to... That's not our role any longer. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. saying you can't be helpful. Right. I'm yeah, not absolutely. saying you can't be, you know, kind. I'm not saying you can't even maybe provide where you can, when you can. Mm-hmm. But when it is a expected, controlled right. way of living life, that's when it becomes a problem, especially when it begins to uh, interfere with the real responsibilities of your mm-hmm. life, being a father, being a husband, et cetera. Uh, next is integrity. In, in, in other words, again, know who you are know what you're protecting, and know what is the right thing to do without a major altercation. What this is trying to do is, this is trying to prevent an altercation. This quiet boundary that we create is trying to prevent, you know, this blow up, this knockdown drag out, if you will, that so many get involved in when they have a narcissist in their life. So again, in closing, here's the question many ask, but what if they get angry? What if my mom gets angry? What if my dad gets angry? What if, you know, you know I don't, I'm not calling them right back. Right. I'm not you know, doing what they want. I'm not going over like I used to. What if they get angry? Here's at a very important point. If you've tuned out, please tune in. <laughs> don't take responsibility for their emotions. Hmm. Okay. Don't take responsibility for their emotions. Don't get into a verbal match with them. Again, the narcissist wants to get into a verbal match. That is where they thrive. That is the fuel. Uh, that is the energy to who they are. But don't get into mm-hmm. a verbal match with them. Uh, don't be afraid to say no. I mean, Jesus made it clear. He said, let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Don't be afraid to say no. As we've said over and over again, your yes has no value until you learn to say no. Realize this, they are not the center of your universe. In this case, the mom and the dad who are the narcissist are not the center of your universe. Mm-hmm. You know, your, your faith, God, you know, your family, your wife, your kids, you know, that's, that's the center of your universe, not your parents, not anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, avoid getting pressured. Again, they will try to pressure you. They will try to push hard on you, but avoid getting pressured. Uh, stick to your convictions. Uh, Again, if this is what you feel is important and it should be, you stay focused on I'm a dad now, I'm a a husband now, I'm a medical professional now in this case, I'm going to stick to my convictions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also realize this, that extortion doesn't create a healthy or real relationship. Mm -hmm. If there's someone who is extorting you, telling you that you better do this, you better do that, or you're not my friend anymore, you're going to have a problem. So here's a takeaway. Narcissistic abuse is real. It happens in families. It happens in churches. It happens in business. It happens in social media. Create distance. Um, Say less. Avoid the places where you're going to be abused. Saying no is important. Focus on your quality world. And that will give you the peace of mind, the respect for yourself, and those who you are to be responsible for. They'll have your best. They'll have your most. And they'll have your purest. That's why boundaries again, and quiet boundaries are so very important in the family. Well, there you have it from the family answer, man, that quietly, con- quietly confronting narcissist. Uh, you can do this and remember what is important and stay focused on those things. Thanks for joining us again on the family answer, man. We hope to see you again in the future.